This video has been sponsored by Helix Sleep. Up here in the northeastern United States, it is the horrendously humid summer season. That means more bugs and bees, more sunburn, and at least one positive, it is lobster roll season. As such, I've been eating a ton of them from all over. I'm surprised they haven't started coming out of my pores by now. But then I started thinking, why do we only have a lobster roll season when we've already established on this channel crab is better in almost every facet, right? Let all of New England come for me. I don't care. In my opinion, crabs are softer and sweeter. They're just more delicious. So today, we are here to once and for all put this question to bed and hopefully prove myself right in the battle of the crustaceans. For the first course, we will be making straight up lobster and crab rolls so they have nothing to hide behind. It is them in their purest forms. For round two, we'll be taking it up a notch and putting a classic lobster bisque up against a Maryland style cream of crab chowder. And then the final knockout round, if we even need it, is the pasta course. A lobster mac and cheese. We'll be battling it out with an incredible looking crab linguine. Feel free to share all of your opinions down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to read through them and tell some of you how wrong you are. And let's get right into this one. We've got a lot to do today, obviously. We've got six recipes to make. This took a lot of planning, a lot of ingredient sourcing. So it is a great thing that I'm well rested and up for the challenge, thanks to my friends over at Helix Sleep. Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and are shipped directly to your door. As we all know, everybody's body type and sleep preferences are different, so that's why Helix developed their very own sleep quiz to match you up perfectly with one of their mattresses from their unbelievable lineup of options. Very much like when I lay down on my mattress, I've lost track of time since I myself took their sleep quiz and because of factors like my body type and the fact that I sleep on my back. They hooked me up with this guy and it has been a dream ever since. It has been years of unbelievable sleep. I love the fact that you could take the quiz with your partner and find something that's the perfect compromise for the both of you. And maybe the best part is that anywhere in the US you can get your mattress delivered right to your door for free. It comes rolled up in a box and could not have been easier to set up myself. And unlike a lot of other brands, Helix mattresses do not contain any fiberglass, which can possibly be harmful to your health. And incredibly, Helix offers a 100 night sleep trial. So if you're nervous to buy something you haven't tried yet, you have over three months to make sure you love your mattress. They also offer a 10 year warranty, financing options, and a flexible payment plan. So a great night's sleep is never that far away. So if you're looking for a new bed, I can't urge you enough to click that link in the top line of the description and go to helixsleep.com slash David Seymour. And when you do so, you will get 20% off of your mattress plus Plus two free pillows. Leading off today's crab and lobster fest will be the iconic, the classic lobster roll from Sam the Cooking Guy. I grabbed some celery and panko breadcrumbs, good quality butter and garlic, top split rolls and fresh dill, smoked paprika, a lemon, and only because there were no fresh lobsters in the tank, we're gonna have to settle for some frozen stuff today. Listen, I'm not ashamed to admit that if I don't have to kill an animal myself, I won't. And it's not like if I did it, it would inspire the majority of you to start slaughtering lobsters in your own kitchen, so I think we'll be just fine using some already dead things today. But welcome back to the channel, my peeps. Thank you all so much for sticking around. I'm sorry I missed you last week. I went on a little trip. And because this one took a couple extra days of planning, I figured I would just skip a week. My life's just so hard, guys. Like, I needed a vacation. I feel myself eating food in the basement, you know? It's, <laughs> it's a lot of stress. Jokes aside, I think everybody should be entitled to a little bit of time off. My heart goes out to those who don't get that. Especially in this country, we're one of the richest countries in the history of human civilization, and we can't give people a few weeks off. How many months do you guys get in Europe again? Anyway, that was one hell of a tangent. I'm very sorry. Um, there's a few components that we had to prep up for this one. Obviously, our butter that we're gonna steep the garlic, the fresh herbs, and eventually finish poaching our lobster in because we're only gonna steam that tail halfway. That should prevent any overcooking from happening. You want that to finish cooking in that butter sauce. You also have to toast up some breadcrumbs, which I don't think I've ever seen on a lobster roll in my life, but I will keep an open mind. And of course, toast off both sides of your split top roll. I'm just not realizing this video could very easily start another debate about the types of lobster rolls from the Connecticut to Maine. I don't care really, I love them all. I will say I have a slight preference to the warm ones with just a little butter, but by the looks of this one, this seems like the perfect balance. There's a reason I selected Sam's over the million other lobster rolls there were. And let's start this video off right with the iconic lobster roll. 
First of all, can we just admire the toast I got on this bread? I feel like you couldn't see it in the final plating clip. Mm. I love this food. It is so good. It is lobster in its perfect form. Them damn prisoners back in the day must have been living life. When it's cooked right, it's got the perfect bite and chew between that meaty savoriness, the freshness. My one and only complaint I've always had with these is the sogginess in the bottom. I don't know why no one's ever thought to toast the inside, figure out a way to do that. They only toast the outside. You can kind of see with all that butter, the inside and bottom gets a little bit soggy, but I can deal with it. I also don't really need the breadcrumbs in this one. It feels a little pointless. Um, you've already got the texture with the celery. Overall though, very, very good. I will never say no to one of these things. And this is the start to a great day for me. Anyways. And in the red corner, we're gonna be whipping together some crab rolls inspired by Brad Leone. I grabbed some beer and more rolls, fresh garlic and more good butter, some sambal and miso, and then of course, some king crib. Korea legs. I don't know what that was. Uh, for this one, I say inspired because Brad doesn't really make a roll in the video. He just shows you how he is preparing his freshly caught crabs with the most delicious miso garlic butter that I have made before. I can attest it is phenomenal. So I'm just gonna prepare everything exactly how he does by dunking down the crab in some boiling water, fusing it with that butter, and then just placing it on a roll in the end. Also, I feel like I have to address this before this video goes on any longer. I won't get rid of my cutting board. I saw your comments in the last video. I thought I was gonna have to because it's not just like a cosmetic burn on the top. It actually caused some of the wood to split, but it's not so deep that I can't sand it out. So I'll get to it. I didn't know my cutting board was so sentimental to so many of you. And with that, we just have to assemble our crab roll. This thing looks to die for. Cannot wait to take a bite, so let's taste it. Oh, it smells so good. It, actually, good isn't even like a descriptive enough word. Between the toasty, buttery roll smell and all that crab, the garlic butter. There are parts of my body that have chills right now. I didn't know it was possible. <laughs> oh man, this is good. I, I just like, do I even need to describe it? Look at the damn thing. I'm sorry, but it's not comparable. It's just better. It's sweeter, it's more tender. I also feel like there's a lot of variation in lobster, even just in the tail. Some pieces can be a little bit tougher, some not. That doesn't exist in this. It's just uniformly incredible. Ever since the last time I made that Brad recipe, I've been trying to sneak miso in everything I make, everything possible, because it just ups the umami level so much more. 10 out of 10, absolutely perfect food. Please make this if you have the means. I don't see how anything else is gonna top this today, but I guess we have to keep going. Okay, so we are 1-0 to Team Crab, but I wouldn't close the book on this one yet. Next up is soups, and as you guys know, I friggin' love me a lobster bisque. But the leader is gonna go first, and we are gonna be trying some Maryland-style crab chowder. I acquired some dry sherry and AP flour, jumbo lump crab meat and Old Bay, lots of half and half, salt and pepper, a yellow onion, and some butter. Now obviously in the first round, it was a lot easier to keep the two variables the same, you know, with the bread, the higher quality butter. But for this round, that is gonna go very much out of the window because these two are gonna go in completely opposite directions. The only similarity is that they are creamy, seafood-based soups. For this crab chowder, it starts with a base of butter, onions, AP flour, and the Old Bay, making a good old-fashioned roux. You really want to cook those onions down, get a little bit of color on them, toast off the Old Bay seasoning because there's not a whole lot of components here. Each one that's going into this is going to do a lot of heavy lifting before gradually splashing in the half and half, a little bit at a time to make sure that roux disperses evenly. And then once that reduces down for a couple minutes, you add in as much crab meat as your heart desires, finish it with a little bit of the dry sherry, and you're done. If nothing else, this one's got to get points for its ease of attainability. I feel like this is a recipe I could have nailed even back in 2016 when I didn't know how to dice an onion. I just finished it with a little bit more sherry, and it's time to give this a try. I can't say I've ever seen somebody garnish with just straight alcohol, like a little drizzle of it. It has kind of dispersed in there by now, but it's a new one. I can get on board though. I didn't say it was a bad idea. 
Why is crab so underused? Those, the cans of it isn't that expensive. This is just a really good New England clam chowder, except with crab. It's super creamy and rich, but it's not overwhelmingly so. Sherry does a nice job of cutting that. The damn thing came together in 15 minutes. Like, when can you make a soup that fast, much less a seafood soup? I have a feeling this is gonna find its way into my weekly cycle of recipes just to throw together, because this is really good. And looking to take down this round and even up the score is the OG, the legendary Chef John from Food Wishes and his incredible looking lobster bisque. I collected some celery and heavy cream, Worcestershire sauce and paprika, tomato paste, crushed tomatoes, some brandy and the lobster steaming liquid, some rice and bay leaves, cayenne pepper, some lobster claws, a yellow onion and garlic, fresh thyme, fresh chives, salt and pepper, and the remains of the lobster tail. It's been a while since we have recreated a recipe from the Food Wishes channel, otherwise known as Chef John. If you are new around here and you're unsure of who that is, let me just take a moment. This guy has unquestionably solidified his place on the Mount Rushmore of food YouTubers, perhaps even on internet food creators in general. For one thing, this video I'm referencing is well over 12 years old, so Chef John was busting out high quality food YouTube videos before myself, Nick Giovanni, and others were even out of middle school. Not to mention, the amount of culinary knowledge that I've sucked up from this guy over the years is just incomprehensible. He's taught so many people so many things about cooking. He's like the Alton Brown of food YouTube. And as I say that, for the first time ever, I am learning that lobster bisques were traditionally thickened by white rice. Of course before that, he does roast off all your lobster pieces and the veggies in the oven, transfer that to the stovetop with all the other ingredients. I'm expecting this to be unbelievably complex and flavorful with the amount of brandy, the tomato paste, all those fresh herbs, the Worcestershire sauce, like this thing should be slamming. And then close to the end, while the sauce is condensing and thickening up, you also are cooking rice right in the soup and then sticking an immersion blender in there. My mom was kind of blown when I saw this because I have never seen this done before. I never knew this was the traditional authentic way. If you asked me how to thicken a soup like this, I would have said a roux or some kind of slurry with a starch. But I guess all this is is just a starch that's introduced in a different form, so who knew? I guess all these years later, Chef John keeps on giving. To finish this baby off, you have to add back in some of those chopped up lobster pieces, Plate it up with a little swirling of some heavy cream, and that's it. So let's see how it stacks up. I feel like if I try to give you guys too good of a view of this, it's gonna be dumped on my desk, so uh, you're gonna have to take my word for it. Mm. This is probably the most unique lobster bisque I've ever had from the texture to the complexity. I don't know that I like it any more than the standard lobster bisque. I love them all. I can't get over the rice, first of all. The texture and the mouthfeel it gives you, it's thick and creamy. The depth of flavor on this is just unreal. I don't know what is making this come to my mind, but I feel like an old school, like, Italian or French New Yorker made this. It's kind of got that boozy finish. It's something I would have been absolutely enamored with as a kid. Like, how did they make this? What is this comprised of? It is just so damn good. And of course, the lobster is great too. You rarely find pieces like that in a soup, but this one is just great. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and finish this. Uh, this round goes to Team Dancing Lobsters. And now off to round three. Some may say the most important food group of them all, the pasta round, and we're gonna be starting with Ina Garten's Lobster Mac and Cheese. I gathered together some whole milk and cavatappi pasta, panko breadcrumbs and AP flour, some more butter and nutmeg, salt and pepper, and the rest of our lobster reserves, some cheddar cheese, and some gruyere. Now correct me if I'm wrong, which I very well could be. I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, much less all the hundreds of videos I've done by now. But I think this is the first Ina Garten recipe we've ever done, which is kind of shocking. She's been a mainstay on Food Network for decades, it feels like. I used to love watching her with my grandma growing up, and I remember always thinking that her actual name was Barefoot Contessa. What does that actually mean, by the way? Is that like a weird nickname or something? It was the original name of my specialty food store. It means being both elegant and earthy. All right. Whatever you say. Anyways, to get back on track here, um, this is a real simple one, especially compared to a lot of the other sauces we've been making. It starts with a very simple roux, then you add the whole milk and a little bit of salt and pepper, which makes this a bechamel, 
And of course, the cheese makes it a sauce mornay. Shoutouts to Chris Morocco for absolutely ingraining that in my head. We are using a boatload of cheese, pretty much all of the cheddar and gruyere I showed you at the beginning. That should get this super thick and velvety. And then once your pasta is boiled off, you combine the two together, mix it with your lobster. This feels like one of those old school Food Network recipes where Alton Brown, Bobby Flay, and even Ratty Rachel were all at their peaks and everything was just so simple for the home cook. But yeah, I'd say overall this is looking pretty decent, but it's anybody's game at this point, so let's give this one a shot. God, it is late. I am covered in sweat and crab and lobster juice. Actually, it's 1.30 in the morning. It's been a long but very good day. How long until I burn myself I'm trying to hold this and show you guys at the same time? I do wish it got a little bit more charred around the edges, maybe a little bit more bubbly sauce, but I think it looks pretty good. First of all, that cheese is delicious. That's like one of my new favorites, that Kerrygold cheddar. It's so tasty and you do get it in this. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit disappointed. I was expecting it to be much more overwhelming with such strong cheeses, um, but it's a little bit one note. It could use a pinch of cayenne for sure. It's good, but it's just a little bit monotone. Like I feel like I could see myself getting bored of it pretty fast. The lobster in there is great though. Unsurprisingly. I will say though, the texture is on point. There's no lumps at all. It's super creamy. It's got such a pleasant texture. Am I a food snob for calling this boring? I might be. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of not what I was expecting. It definitely leaves the door wide open for the last one though. And it all comes down to this. For all the marbles, this is the last recipe of the day. And it lies in the hands of one Gino DeCampo and his crab linguine. I acquired some white wine and linguine pasta, salt and green olives, fresh garlic, a lemon, some extra virgin olive oil and parsley, snow crab legs, some tomatoes, and a hot red chili. I'm gonna be honest, this one's out there for the taking. I really expected that mac and cheese to raise the bar high. It's one of my favorite things to order at different restaurants, so I'm still a little surprised by my disappointment, but there's no guarantee this one's gonna deliver either. And it starts with a load of chopped up fresh herbs and aromatics from the chili and the parsley, those olives, lots of garlic, and of course our crab legs. And as with a lot of other pasta or noodle dishes, you want to get all this prep stuff out of the way first, because once that heat flicks on, this comes together very quickly. Really fast though, shout out to Gino too. If you guys don't know him, he is a legend, mostly on British TV. He's a really talented Italian chef. Again, I don't know how we've never done recipes from him either, but he always makes such great looking stuff and he has his fair share of very funny viral moments as well. So if you weren't already familiar, I'm sure you would recognize him from one or two of his most well-known clips. But one by one, I laid all my components down in the pan. I tried to time this up perfectly so as the pasta was finishing cooking, it would be ready to plop in the sauce. I hope you're all proud of me that I have successfully ignored the elephant in the room up until now, um, these wretched tomatoes, but I'm gonna do my best to continue to ignore them. But now is the time for a winner to be crowned, so let's give the sixth and final recipe a taste. Talk about two opposites. You've got one that was super rich and creamy and thick. This one's much more light, much easier on your organs. Although, probably doesn't matter what I eat after today. Mmm. That chili is damn hot though. Holy cow. This is freaking great. I would be so happy with this in any Italian restaurant. It's so punchy and fresh and light. You pull out bites like this and you're like, how can that be tasty? That looks so bland. There's not a whole lot going on. But that's just not the case at all. It is so freaking flavorful. The crab is right up front. I would pull back the chili a little bit on the next time. Thank God I only used half of that thing. I would also cut the tomatoes down a little bit more and uh, hide them a bit better, but that shows you how good the rest of this has to be. This is to die for. Not to mention, it's four in the morning. I probably haven't been tired since like lunchtime yesterday, and this is still hitting. It goes without saying that crab is gonna take the overall dub today. Although I'm a little bit disappointed it wasn't closer. I kind of hyped up my love for crab, knowing that anybody could take it, and there was a pretty good chance that um, lobster would in the back of my mind, but I guess you can't base your life on ifs, because as a wise man once said, If my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. <laughs> you know, what, you know, <laughs> Hey, hey, 
yeah. with the M, yeah. M without the A D. Yeah. Yeah. With the burgers yeah. and my money, super lazy. Yeah. Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me. Try and supersize my life with my A team. Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs>